All right, welcome everybody. Welcome to Watch Party, Director's Cut. I am your host, Leroy Aaron, and joining me is fellow director. Mead McGee. Mead McGee, welcome back, sir. How you doing today? Doing pretty good. Good, good, good. Oh man, we got a whole slate of movies and shows and everything for you, Excited. but before we get to it, let's just let everybody know what we do. Um, here at the station, uh, we are what's known as directors, and what we do is we sit in the control room and we basically continue the uh, motion and the movement for the show. Uh, the producer lays out what they want, and the director takes that plan and put it into action. What you think? How, how you do? You, you enjoy directing? I enjoy directing a lot. I started rec about two years ago, and it's just so fast moving, and mm -hmm. just you just get in the zone, and it's just it's so fun. I know uh, it it's is. It's just so fun. It is, and and we figured that with us being directors, this is the perfect opportunity to use our director eye and go through some of the you know movies and TV shows that are streaming, mm -hmm. you know, just to give people an insight on what's going on. So you know, in case they might be thinking of watching it or they have watched it, hey, we can have a, a conversation, a dialogue yeah. about it, you know, because it's all art. Yeah, you it's know? all art. And all just, entertainment. We love talking about it. It's, Absolutely. It, like when we're at home, what are we doing? We're watching TV. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're, we're always, always eyes glued to a television. Absolutely. So without further ado, we're going to kick it here to our first trailer, Tales of the Empire. Check this out. Why do you seek Imperial favor? Years ago, my people were all but destroyed. My anger gives me strength. It is that strength I offer the Empire. Offer accepted. I'm here to present you with an opportunity, Paris. Just be glad you're not a Jedi anymore. Your path is set, Morgan Elspeth. I will fulfill my destiny. Mercy only breeds defeat. But I will help you overcome this weakness. Attack! You said the Empire would help to change things. Everything comes at a cost. My world has been burning since I was a child. You cannot stop what has begun. Now you must face one final test. To join us. It is time you meet your new master. Long live the Empire. I'm so excited for that, man. I'm so Tales of, now Tales of the Empire is about a vengeful young woman and a former Jedi who navigate the ruthless Empire, Galactic Empire, excuse me, during different eras. Their divergent choices shaping their fates, rapidly changing galaxy. This include this um, Tales of the Empire includes the voice talents of Jason Isaacs, Lars Metzen, and Meredith Slinger. Me, let me tell you something. I really enjoy May 4th. I, oh. Star Wars Day is an event for me. So yeah. when Disney Plus dropped this Tales of the Empire, I was super excited. Last year they dropped Tales of the Jedi, which was just, it was unbelievable. Yep. But Tales of the Empire, this was unbelievable because it gave me insight of little known, little known um, characters from, from the Star Wars, you know. Star Wars universe. Yeah, right, right, right. Uh, I grew up watching Star Wars The Clone Wars, so like, see, getting to see Barriss Offee later on, Barriss is one of the right. characters in the show, and she has like a whole like turning to the dark side uh, arc in the TV show, and mm -hmm. just seeing her afterwards and seeing where she ended up once the Empire took over, and just seeing her story develop, 
And then even with Morgan Elsbeth, the other character that they follow, right, the she's sister. in Ahsoka and a Mandalorian. Right, right. So her <laughs> character, we get to get some insight on what she was before we see her in those series. Mm -hmm. And it's just cool to like fill those gaps and like learn more about these characters because Star Wars is what brings me to Star Wars is the lore, like learning right, about it. Right. And just the world building is what's so cool about it. Right, right. And just the connections. Like you always have the connection to the Skywalker family. Like always. you always have the connection. And and with Tales of the Empire, you can see how just the influence of the Empire and and, and Darth Vader and yep. the Darth Side and how it just influences these characters and it just it, it brings it all together. And you know with Dave Filoni. Yep. Who, who created that these characters are going to show up again, either in The Mandalorian mm -hmm. or somewhere along the line. So it, this isn't just like a one-off. We're going to yep. see these characters again. Man. Oh, for sure. Tales of the Empire, it, it, it was really good. Great Check it show. Out. It was easy watch, like 15-minute episodes. Mm -hmm. They're quick, easy, and enjoyable. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. All right, next up we have Shirley. Now, Sher this is about Shirley Chisholm. Shirley Chisholm makes a trailblazing run for the 1972 Democratic presidential nomination after she is uh, elected as the first black woman to Congress. Shirley stars Regina King, Lance Riddick, and Terrence Howard. Also, Shirley is written and directed by John Ridley, who wrote and directed 12 Years a Slave um, and American Crime, it's American, American crime drama, something of that nature, but it is really good. It comes on ABC, but Shirley, Shirley is, is a great, 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 great movie. Um, we rarely see movies or media about black women mm -hmm. um, in politics um, who come into the bigger stages of politics, like a presidential nominee or presidential office holder or anything for that, yep. for that matter. But Shirley is a great, great show on Netflix. Regina King does an amazing job transforming into Shirley Chisholm, and it, it was just, it was just a nice, prideful movie to watch. You know what I mean? Because again, representation is so important, and yep. Shirley does it, and and I just, I, I love it, man. Like the star-studded cast brings everything to the table, and they do a great job of bringing the story to life. And right. It's something that we can appreciate and watch and enjoy. Uh huh. Right. Exactly. And I wouldn't be surprised to see if this show was nominated for a bunch of Academy Awards down the line, um, especially for maybe um, lead actress with Regina King, because again, she does a great job. Yep. Um, and Lance Riddick and Terrence Howard, they all do great jobs. So yep. I could see nominations down the line for I, Shirley. Yeah. Um, great sure. movie, great movie. So if you're on Netflix and you got some time, yeah. check it out. Please check it out. Please do. All right, next up, we have Rebel Moon Part 2. Now, when we left Rebel Moon, we saw everybody on on the um, planet of Velt yeah. getting ready to defend the home. Now, coming into Rebel Moon Part 2, all Korra and the surviving warriors are getting their weapons together. They're getting their skills together. They're um, preparing to defend Velt. Um, from from all the forces coming to come and take over. Yep. Um, have you have did you get a chance to check it out at all? I did not get a chance to watch the full Rebel Moon two. Mm -hmm. I did see the first one and just seeing the world building and what they did with it. I think there's a lot to go on and I just hope this one's as good as the first one. Well, um, I'll tell you because I did get a chance to watch it. Yeah. Um, and, and somebody, cause I went back and watched Rebel Moon one first, and then just went into it, and it's it's everything that you were imagining. Um, I don't want to call what happened in Rebel Moon one fluff because you need the background, you, yeah, you need you to do. build up. But Rebel Moon two, there is no quote unquote fluff. They get into it, they train. The enemy comes, the action comes, it's action packed from beginning to end, it, it's everything you would expect. You got your Zack Snyder slow-mo. Oh yeah. I was but it, the thing about his slow-mo though, and this one, they are well placed. They're, They're well not placed. just dropped everywhere, just yep. random slow-mo and it, it builds up the action. Um, mm -hmm. And and I mean, Cora does a thing, man, and it is, it's yep. dope. I think you will really enjoy it. Like it keeps you up to the very end. Um, there is no falling asleep. Rebel Moon 2, man, I think yeah. you really enjoy it. Zack Snyder did his thing with this, man. Yeah, he like, did. he really did his thing. Um, 
And I again, it, it kind of puts you in the mind of Star Wars. Like we started, yeah. we started the show talking about Star Wars. This is it'll put you in the mind of it, but different characters, different scenario. I think you'll really enjoy it if, if you watch the first one, man. I will be giving it a watch. Please, 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 man. All right. Next up, we have Civil War. Civil Ooh. War. Coming from people who work in news, Civil War is about a journey across a dystopian future following a team of military-embedded journalists as they race against time to reach D.C. before rebel factions descend upon the White House. It stars Kristen Dunst, and I just want to say this movie is like a love letter, love letter to camera journalists, like photojournalists, uh, especially war journalists, and what goes on in this movie, it's just... You're, you're on the edge of your seat just like, what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? Because it's just, I would call it a stress fest, but it's like a good stress fest where you're like, you want to know what happens. And, yeah, I, and you know what? And I saw this movie, and, and it's funny that you say it's like a, a love letter to, to journalists because I always wonder, like, when they send journalists over to Iraq, or Russia in the war zones. What kind? What do they go through? What's going through yep. their minds? Are they worried about their families or their jobs? And this movie seems to uh, include all of those questions. And yeah, it does a good job of including those themes and like just having the characters in the movie like kind of go through this journey and foreshadowing like what they're feeling throughout and what it mm. leads to in the end. Okay. I will say, Kristen Dunst husband Jesse Plemons actually makes an appearance in the movie he was not originally supposed to be in the movie uh, a couple days before there this specific scene that Jesse Plemons is in they're like we need somebody and Kristen Dunst is like I got a guy who can do it and I will say this one scene this one scene is like the craziest scene in the entire movie Jesse Plemons <laughs> I'm amazing. excited man Jesse amazing. Plemons is so good man Jesse he Plemons. is so good and Kristen Dunst the entire movie is just incredible Right, right, right. He was good. I mean, he was good in, in, in Friday Night Lights when I first saw him. He was good in The Party. Jesse Plummins has been good in everything I've seen him in. Everything. So that, 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 that's something for me to look forward to. Yes. I do, I'm definitely going to check out Civil War, man. Definitely. Definitely. All right. Next up, check out this, this, this trailer from Monkey Man. Close your eyes. And you will find yourself. When I was a boy, my mother used to tell me a story of a demon king and his army. They brought fire and terror to the land. Until they faced the protector of the people, the white monkey. to do. I'll do it. Anyone who forgets their place, it doesn't turn out well for them. This is not the place to work if you can't handle that sort of stuff. Every day, I've prayed for a way to protect the weak. I've got an answer to every prayer. I call her Nikki. Minaj, big bumper, nice headlights. Let's boogie. Just one small ember can burn down everything. I'm you. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for a fight? One, two, three. An anonymous young man unleashes a campaign of vengeance against the corrupt leaders who murdered his mother 
and continue to systematically victimize the poor and the powerless. Monkey Man stars Dev Patel and Shalto Copley. Monkey Man is in theaters and streaming now on, I believe, Amazon Prime? Yes, I think you can rent it. Rent it on yep. Prime, probably Apple TV as well. Yep. You can rent the movie. But I went and saw this movie, like, opening night. I was so excited because I love the John Wick movies and the marketing for it was showing like all these action fighting scenes and I will say this movie delivers. It delivers. Man, it, it looks great, man. It, Dev, Dev Patel, like I'm oh, yeah. a huge fan. I've been a huge fan since the be since his first movie and I just he looks like he like he's got in shape for it. Yeah, he, he got looked, cut for it. He actually hurt himself multiple times throughout the filming of this movie because this movie took I think it started pre pandemic and okay. then, a uh, bunch of things. Pandemic happened. Right. Production went to nothing. Nothing. And then Jordan Peele came in and helped bring the movie back. Oh wow! Oh, so, I didn't know Jordan Peele had anything to do with it. Yeah, he's an executive producer on the movie. Oh, okay. But All right. Deb Patel is incredible. He is his own John Wick now, uh -huh. in my opinion. He is. He does so good. There, the balance of action, comedy, and just drama throughout the entire movie is just so well done the pacing you're just on the edge of your seat the entire time i was going to ask is it is it from beginning to end just action 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 it's not quite john wick okay so like there is some time where it slows down and you're like actually getting a plot that's fine because i gotta catch my breath so. yeah Sometimes you, you can I, catch I, your <laughs> breath in this like if you're expecting to get a full movie of john mm -hmm. wick you're not gonna get that you're no no, no no i'm so out of breath at the end of john wick yes like like, I'm still trying to figure out, all right, who he shot. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, it's the Continental back open, this, yep. that, and the other. So, I mean, I, I appreciate the slowdown a little bit. Yep. Okay, cool. But the Dev Patel's character, by the end of the movie, you're just, like, so satisfied with, like, his entire journey. And you're like, dang. Beautiful. Beautiful, Beautiful, man. Beautiful. Well, I'm going. I'm definitely going to see Monkey Man. The set Absolutely. Piece, the set pieces, everything about this movie are just great. Cool, cool, cool. All right, well, next okay. up. We got Yellow Jackets. Woo, Yellow, Yellow Jackets. Jackets. I heard about this. It's about a widely talented group of high school girls from a soccer team who become severely unlucky when their plane crashes, and they're the unlock, uh, unlucky survivors in the deep wilderness of Canada. Uh, this show stars Melanie Linsky, Tawny Cypress, and Juliette Lewis. And you can find this on Showtime Paramount. This show is goes between two different time periods. You have current time and it goes back in time to showing the girls when they were younger when they went through this experience and you're trying to figure out what happened okay. this is the whole idea of the show is trying to figure out what actually happened when they were stuck in the wilderness oh, okay. um, there is a lot of if you know about the andes plane crash i believe in 1972 where a rugby team crashed in the andes mountains and this movie is loosely takes from that okay. as inspiration to what's going on. And if you know about that experience, that what happened there, you can assume where this is going. But this show is just keeps you on the edge of your seat trying to figure out what happens. Okay. What is going on? Because it starts out just with a bang. You're like, oh. You're just thrown in there. You're just thrown in there. And like, oh, this is what, okay. Okay. But you, there's the antler queen who... We still don't know who it is. We're about to go into season three, and we have no clue who it okay. is. Okay, that's what I was going to ask you. What season are they on? They're on season two. They finished nine episodes, I believe, for season two, and there's supposed to be a special episode in between season two and three. That's episode ten to like bridge the gap. Okay. Because I believe they finished season two right when the writer strike hit. Okay. That so makes that sense. caused a pause in production, but. Every one of these actresses does a great job. You have up and coming actresses such as Ella Purnell, who's in Fallout now, okay. and she's broken out since right, the show. Right, right, right. Um, Juliette Lewis, I'm Juliette a huge Lewis, fan of. She's great. From back in the day. Melanie Linsky, she's amazing. And then just the entire cast just fill, plays their character so well. Okay. They're, Okay, it's, cool. Yellow jackets, huh? All right, well, I'm going to definitely check that out, man. I'm going to definitely check it out. All right, all right, next up, we have the sympathizer, Owen Max. Near the end of the Vietnam War, a plant who was embedded in the South Vietnam Army flees to the United States and takes up residence in a refugee community where he continues to secretly spy and report back to the Viet Cong. The, sympathi the sympathizer stars Ho Ho Sway, excuse me if I mispronounce your name. Sunday. Uh, Sunday. 
So, um, uh, Robert Downey Jr. and Tone Lee. Now, admittedly, I've I've began watching this uh, sympathizer. I've only watched one episode. Um, I was a little confused by the beginning, but at the end, though, I started to see what was going on as far as the Vietnam War and what was going on back and forth. So, yep. I'm very I'm very looking forward to getting to the next episode, which you have already watched. I have already. Wa- I'm one episode behind. I still have to watch one more episode, and then I'm caught up. But I also read the book. It's a Pulitzer Prize winning book by Viet Thanh Nguyen, I believe. Excuse me if I s- pronounced that wrong. But this book and show, the show itself, follows along with the book. There's comedy, there's drama, there's just the inner conflict within the main character's head. He goes by the captain. He doesn't really, he's kind of like Monkey Man. He doesn't really have a name. Okay. But you're going through his like internal struggle of being mixed race, mm-hmm. being trying to figure out like who he truly is. Mm. And it's that uh, discussion between capitalism versus communism. It's the mixed race. Is he Vietnamese or is he French? Mm-hmm. Like just that mixed identity. And he's also a spy. So it's embedded in everything in his personality is just embedded in this. He's so conflicted with everything that's going on in his own life. Okay. And he's trying to live up to the expectations of what he's supposed to do as a spy and what he has to do. Okay. Every what this is about. And and, and that's and that's that's pretty funny and you you mentioned that it was kind of a comedy too. It was kind of threw me off because the first episode you got the seriousness of the Vietnam War as the background, but then you've got the 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 relationship between uh, the, uh, the captain is his name, and Robert Downey Jr. And so you hear, kind of hear the jokes, and it's kind of like, oh, uh, should I laugh at this? Yeah. But once you get to the end of the episode, you're like, oh, I can't wait for the next one. And if you want to know something funny about this movie, <coughs> excuse me, Robert Downey Jr. plays four characters. He plays four separate characters, and they're the only four white guys in the entire movie. It's kind of fun. <laughs> it's really fun. <laughs> so, like, I, I just, if you like Robert Downey Jr., you're going to get a lot of them. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Next up. Now, this is this next show has been my favorite reboot. I want to say of all time. Really? Next up, we have X Men '97. Okay. A band of mutants use their uncanny gifts to protect a world that hates and fears them. They they're challenged like never before to face a dangerous and unexpected future. Now, admittedly, so. I used to watch X-Men back in the day when it came out in 1992. Then it was an unbelievable show. It was it was brand new. It was cutting edge for its time. The storyline was there. They followed the comic books and it was on point. And then they canceled it. Yeah. And then they brought it back for it brought it back here in this year and man they it was like they they picked up right where they left off. Yep. You know, they, the writing is on point. They stick to the comic books. Um, the drama is there. The comedy is there. I, I just, I love the X-Men. I love what the X-Men stand for. Um, I love the background of how they came to be. I just, everything about the X-Men, I love it. So X-Men 97 to me, it's just, it's been unbelievable. It's on Disney+. Plus. Um, and just check it out. You know, you can watch it with your kids. Uh, not, not the real young kids. But kind of, yeah. you know, the older kid, the older kids, but you can watch it, and it's just a great, great show. I actually picked up on this show. I started with this show, so it's a little bit different for me. It's like the generational divide. Like, right, 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 right. So, like, what I see, like, I'm coming in from where the show is already built up, but, mm-hmm. like, they do it so well. Right. So, like, you understand what's going on, and every single scene matters. Right. Which is so cool about you it. You can't look, like, you got to pay attention, and you got to... Right. And again, I love the way, like you said, the X-Men 97 has bridged the gap between the ages and the yeah. generations. Because, I mean, again, I talk about it online with younger people. I talk about it with you, you younger. Yeah. And so the fact that everybody loves X-Men 97, like they are really on to something. And I salute Marvel for it, man. I really do yeah. salute them, man, because apparently they have two two more seasons ready to go. Yeah, so they, are, they already started on Season man. two, so like they're ready to get this out and rolling. Man, absolutely. I, so, man, I, isn't it the most watched uh, animated show on yes. like, Disney Plus now? Yes, like yes. it came it's out breaking records. It just came out March twentieth, like not long ago. Mm-hmm. 
So that's so, crazy. Yes, absolutely. X-Men 97, man, please check it out. Please, please, I recommend it. Next up, we have Apples Never Fall on Peacock. Now, in this drama, the Delaney family seems happy, but Joy, the family matriarch, she disappears, first forcing her husband and her four adult children to reassess their family history. Apples Never Fall stars Annette Benning and Sam Neill and can be found on a Peacock. Now, I watched this from beginning to end. I admittedly lost a lot of sleep because I binged the show. Um, I'm too old to be binging shows because mm -hmm. I have a job and I got to get up in the morning. So but hard. this so show was hard. so hard to turn off from the beginning. From the first episode when she disappears, you see that the family's not perfect. Like, you see uh, like all the kids, something's wrong with them, the husband's kind of shady, and then the mother disappears. So it's just every episode kind of goes deeper into each um, child, each, um, child, each, each uh, child, each child of the family, yeah. and then goes into the husband, and then just brings you closer and closer, and shows you why everybody had a reason for this lady to disappear seemingly. It's like that, this, that kind of like this mystery of like what's going on. Right, like, right. You want to know. And right. every episode just builds on the other. Even, right. Even if it focuses on one person at a time, mm -hmm. it just helps make it that much better. Absolutely. And just Annette Benning and Sam Neill, they just draw you in, man. And Sam mm -hmm. Neill, I don't know if you remember, he was on, uh, he was in Jurassic Park. Yep. And so he is a great actor and he does the shady husband role so well, man. I wanted to hate him so bad, but I couldn't. I, I mean, I couldn't hate him, but I wanted to. I still want to watch it. I have not watched it yet, but I really do want to watch it because I was just going through and looking at this show and I was like, wow, this is something that I would enjoy. It'd keep me on the edge of my seat and that's what I'm looking for. Absolutely, man. So, man, Apples, Apples Never Fall on Peacock. Please check it out. Please check it out. You will not be sorry. All right, next up, we have the trailer from du Joker Part 2. Let's go, boys. It's showtime. <laughs> Hey, Fleck, you got a joke for us today? We use music to make us whole, to balance the fractures within ourselves. I'm nobody. I haven't done anything with my life like you have. Let's get out of here. talking about Joker Folia Du is something I'm really excited about. Man, oh man. My goodness. The first one just jaw just, wide open. It I was just like, blew out all blew expectations. Every, yeah, it was great. Like, like I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, as far as Jokers are concerned, are, are ranked, this Joker is my, my second favorite. Joaquin obviously. Phoenix. Yeah, Joaquin. Obviously, my first 
my first favorite Joker is Heath Ledger. Oh, yeah. Rest in peace. But Joaquin Phoenix does a great job, man. I'm excited to see Lady Gaga. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's going to be a musical. It is so going to be a musical. Do not be fooled. It is going to be a, a musical, but... You know, Lady Gaga, out. Lady Gaga's got, she's, she's got, got a voice. She can sing. And she's and been she in the know. movie before. Right. She, she knows she, what she's doing. She's a great actress. So she I'm, is. I'm very excited because the, the whole Batman lore for me is just, I have something I've grown up with. So yep. to see it just branch out and just continue blossoming, like I, exactly. I'm very excited. Like I will always be a fan. I will always go spend my money on Batman movies and Joker movies. Always, yeah. without a doubt, man. So yeah. Yeah, just Joker in general is just one of those characters that's so mesmerizing. And then Joaquin mm -hmm. Phoenix has brought something new to the character that people we've had in the past just haven't. Right, And I'm right. like excited to see where it keeps going. Mm -hmm. Even if it's a musical, like I'm excited to see it because it just brings a new perspective on this character right. and what's going on in his head. Like right. what is going on? Because we all know the story of the Joker and his relationship with Batman, but the background story of the Joker and how he came to be and how he met Harley Quinn and their relationship, it's just, it's just something beautiful to see uh, Todd exactly. Phillips to have done. And Todd Phillips, was it Todd Phillips uh, directing? I'm not I'm quite sure. I'm not 100% sure. Don't quote me. But either way, it, it, it's a beautiful movie and Joaquin Phoenix, it, He'll do a great job. I can't wait. Anything like the first one, they're fine. I'm down. I'm down I'm for it all the way. All right. Well, that brings that us it? to the end of Watch Party. That flew by. Oh, man. That flew man. When you're talking TV, man. Yeah, when you're we... talking TV, man, <laughs> it flies by. And if we can, can we let everybody know what we talked about? All right. We talked about Tales of the Empire on Disney+, Plus, Shirley on Netflix, Rebel Moon Part 2 on Netflix, Civil War, which was in the theaters, a Monkey Man, which is in the theaters. And then also, we have. Um, we also talked about Yellow Jackets, which is on Showtime, and I believe you can watch it on Paramount Plus as well if you yep. have Paramount Plus. Uh, the Sympathizer is on Max currently and is still playing. X Men '97, which the season finale just came out. We have on Disney Plus, Apples Never Fall on Peacock, and Joker Folie Adieu. It's coming to theaters soon, so be ready for that one. All right. All of these should get you excited. They have us excited. I'd watch all of them again. Oh, all man. All the ones I've seen again, and man. I need to catch up on a couple of them. Oh, I can't wait. I can't so, wait. So, I can't wait. It's, oh. I'm excited. Well, that's another watch party, man. That is. Director's you got your cut. list. You got your assignment. Go on out. Check it out. Find us on Instagram. Let's start a discussion about it. I have been Leroy Aaron. I'm Mead McGee. And we will check y'all next time. See Watch ya. party.